This week it's an exciting YouTube video. I've been looking forward to talking about it. It's a really, really interesting story about how I bought this house. And if you think you don't care, I bought it with some unusual terms that may be helpful to you if you ever want to get a good deal. So listen up, let's check it out, let's go. For those of you who know what the Great Recession was like, in 2007 there was a lot of foreclosures and it kept kind of escalating for several years afterward. Around the time of 2012, I was interested in buying a new property. And that ultimately wound up being this house, but it wasn't quite the way I thought it was going to be. I wanted a deal. As a matter of fact, I insisted on a deal. I wasn't going to pay top of market. I was going to find a good opportunity. But in Irvine, California, where this house is located, finding deals was difficult, real difficult. So I looked for a type of property that I thought I could get a deal on, which was real estate owned. And for those of you who are the uninitiated, real estate owns mean the banks had taken them back in foreclosure. In post Great Recession, there were a ton of properties that the banks had taken back in foreclosure. So much so that banks were having a really difficult time responding to and then obviously liquidating those assets. And there's some tax reasons that a bank wouldn't do that really quickly. They don't want their balance sheet to take the hit of realized losses right away. So they were slowly selling these properties off back into the market. And it took years for banks to get through this REO portfolio, this real estate they had taken back. So I found, I think it was like five or six different properties and I put offers in on them. Well, this was October. So I put all these offers in, I had the money, I was ready to, I was ready to buy a home and a deal. I was just going to wait patiently. Well, November goes by, December goes by, January, February, Nothing. Fast forward, it's now April. And in April, my friends and I, who had just had a whirlwind romance with, uh, with uh, Jay-Z concerts and tours, and, and we fell in love with the song From Miami to Ibiza. So we decided we were going to do a trip from Miami to Paris. And then a stopover in Saint-Tropez. And as I'm boarding the plane in April, six months later, I get a call, a weird number call. And I normally don't even answer these phone calls. Well, I answer it and it's Wells Fargo, the owner of this property on title saying, hey, congratulations, we accepted your offer. I had never been inside this house. I had never actually spoken to the realtor on this house. I didn't even remember what house it was when they gave me the address on the phone. But I had about 10 minutes to get on a plane and a lot of alcohol already in me. And I thought, okay, well, when do you need my, my good faith deposit funds? And they said, well, You've got 24 hours before we move on to the next offer. Well, taking a red eye to Miami, <laughs> um, after drinking a lot of alcohol, with drinking a lot more alcohol, uh, that's, a, that's a difficult thing to do, especially when I didn't even know if Miami had Wells Fargo banks in there, in, in the city, so how the logistics working out, plus on a Saturday they close and open early and every state's different, I didn't know. But I didn't have a choice, so I said, okay, well, um, give me the wire information. He gave me the wire information, I wrote it down, took a photo of it on my phone and said, tomorrow I'm going to work on this. Well, we landed in Miami. We'd all been drinking. But guess what we did? We went out and did the responsible thing. We went to clubs and partied and drank and had a great time. All went to sleep late. We woke up the next morning. We get a nice cabana. It's this nice subtle pool party. We're paying for everything, getting set up, putting the credit card down. And as I put the credit card down for the little cabana space, this wonderful poolside hotel bar slash, you know, kind of club venue, I go, oh my God. I've got to get to a bank. It's the weekend of EDC or World Music Conference, WMC or whatever the hell they call it out there. There's so many people in South Beach. It's so densely packed. You couldn't even use your cell phone. I couldn't figure out where the nearest Wells Fargo was or if there was one there. I had to use the hotel's computer. I now have about 20 minutes before the nearest Wells Fargo, which there was one in South Beach a couple miles away before they actually close to send the wire. So what do I do? I do the responsible thing a drunk guy can do. A friend and I, we get into a car and we try to get through Miami, but it's bumper to bumper traffic. So we actually wound up getting out of the car and kind of jogging, walking, drunkenly making our way over to Wells Fargo. And literally as they're locking the door before the wire cut off that day, I get in there just in time to send the wire. And shortly before I almost peed myself, went to the bathroom, took a sigh of relief, the wire was out. Except there were some issues there. I'd never seen the house. I had no idea where it was or anything about it other than the fact that it was in Irvine. 
I bought the house for $325,000. I think it was actually a $350,000 sale, but I got a $25,000 seller's credit for issues that we later on found in the appraisal. Surprisingly to me at that time, the property appraised for $350,000, and I got traditional financing and bought the home. I was a little shocked at how much work that needed to go into it when a house sits for that long. The plumbing takes a bit of a hit, and there's some issues there. But it wound up being one of the best economic decisions I'd ever made because the home that I bought is today probably worth just south of $700,000. It's doubled in just nine years. So when you think about the context of how lucky I got and how patient I was for that opportunity, I'm not sure that it's repeatable, but it goes to show you that time is really the great equalizer when it comes to investments, being patient and waiting. Had I made an investment or not waited that six month period, had I just jumped on something and gave up, I probably wouldn't have had this opportunity. And in the real estate game, that's really those moments, those singular moments that'll make the difference between how successful you ultimately are and how your net worth comes out versus you know, what you could be. So take it with a grain of salt. It's, it's a powerful lesson in, in timing and patience, but more importantly, understand that the economy is shifting now. And if there is another recessionary economy and banks do start taking back real estate, you too might have this opportunity and you might wind up in a situation just like I did where there's not a lot of responsiveness. Don't let that discourage you. Deals are always out there, but there's a lot of people looking for them. Be patient. Keep your head on straight. Deals will find you if you're ready. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, follow. We'll see you next time. <laughs>